title is God's Judgment Upon Unjust Rulers. And so we're going to look at what God wants um, for those who put, uh, whom He puts in authority. And if they uh, are not doing their job, um, there's judgment for them. An example is in Psalms 82, 1 to 8. Um, you can see here in Psalm 82, 1, a psalm of Asaph. God takes his stand in his own congregation. He judges in the midst of the rulers. Right? So, uh, it's just like having a council meeting. And God is pronouncing his judgment upon the rulers in the midst of the rulers. Now, in another translation, the rulers are translated gods. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judged among the gods. Now, uh, gods here are um, one of the like uh, titles of the rulers in those days. Just like, for example, the emperor of, uh, let's say, uh, Japan is called uh, uh, like descendants of uh, like God. And so that's how uh, people in ancient look at their rulers like uh, descendants or children or sons of uh, the divine of God. And so uh, some scholars try to interpret this as the, the, the gods uh, of the, it's not the human beings, but the spiritual beings around those uh, uh, countries in those states that they have their own uh, gods. But generally scholars and theologians under understand this as rulers or magistrate, magistrates or judges or those in authority in those states, just like in this interpretation or, or, or translation, he judges in the midst of the rulers. And uh, so we are going to uh, take this as the uh, meaning of this uh, passage. Now, in uh, another translation, I said, You are God's sons of the Most High. All of you, nevertheless, like men, shall die and fall like any prince. So, this is uh, the judgment, you know, to these uh, human beings who they are mighty, they're powerful. And sometimes their titles are gods because um, that's their tradition in those days. And they're also son, uh, called the sons of the Most High. But then, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. You are just also ordinary. Um, you will also die. So we can see here the judgment of God upon these uh, uh, rulers who are even... Uh, they are called most son of the most high. Uh, called, they are called uh, uh, son of God, God son of uh, God, um, or gods, uh, as in the tradition. But then the judgment is they shall die. And so why God judges unjust rulers? That's a question. And we have uh, the answer based on our passage. Instead of defending the weak, the poor and the needy, they defended the unjust and wicked. Right? So, instead of pro-weak and needy, they were pro-unjust and uh, wicked. Um, even, you know, those who, who are uh, doing unjust and they themselves were doing, doing unjust uh, injustice. In uh, verse 2 to 4 in our passage, how long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the cause of the weak and fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Right? So we can see that it's very clear that uh, they are defending the unjust and they show partiality to the wicked. According to our passages, supposed, supposedly they should be defending the cause of the weak. Supposedly they are uh, they should uh, defend the cause of the fatherless. Supposedly they should maintain the rights of the poor and the oppressed. 
and suppose that they, sh they should rescue the weak and the needy and deliver them from the wicked. You see, the problem is that uh, instead of doing all of those, they defend the unjust and the wicked. And so judgment fall upon them. And second, they don't know God and they don't know what is right and wrong, which cause confusion upon the earth. Right? Um, why are they doing unjust or injustice? Primarily, they don't know God. They don't know anything according to our passage. Um, the gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. So the, the judges here or the gods here, the rulers here, uh, who are called gods in their tradition, they know nothing, right? And they understand nothing. Meaning, even God himself, they don't know him. They don't know God and so they are doing injustice. They are doing un unjust. Instead of doing the right thing, they, they, are doing, they are doing the wrong thing. Because they don't know anything. If they don't know what is right. And they don't know what is wrong. They don't know God. And so uh, they don't fear Him. Right? Um, and because of that, according to the passage, all the foundations of the earth are shaken. There is now confusion. Confusion upon the earth. Because of what they are doing. Because of the injustice that they are doing. Now, um, the lesson that uh, we can get here is the heart of God for the weak, the fatherless, the poor, the oppressed, the weak, the needy. And if God puts us in authority, whether in high level or low level or whatever, God wants us to look after them. Um, and He doesn't like uh, us to side with wickedness, with injustice. I don't know where God has uh, put you or me in position. God has put me in leadership as a pastor, uh, as a president in a seminary. And... Uh, I'm thinking, how will God use me in this aspect of uh, defending the cause of the weak, the fatherless, the poor, and the needy, rescuing the weak and the needy, and delivering them from the hand of the wicked. Primarily, we know the wicked is Satan and his demons, but they influence others to do wickedness. And so, uh, Primarily, we should pray to God to give us the strength to do what God wants us to do. By ourselves, by myself, it will be difficult to do what God wants us to do. I need, we need the grace of God that we may do what He wants us to do. Especially if God puts us in authority, in position. We may not be like the rulers in those days, the, the judges in those days, but God may have put us as teachers, authority among the children, uh, as a father to the children, as a mother to the children, as a leader in an organization. God may have put us in other authority, in other positions. And this is the heart of God for the weak and the needy. And to have a justice and righteousness so that there will not be confusion that people may know him and uh, do what is right and what is wrong and so the challenge is uh, that we may let others know God because if those in positions those rulers 
we ourselves do not know God, of course, we will do what is wrong rather than what is right. Because we know nothing about Him or we don't fear Him. We don't know what is right and wrong. And then we will do injustice. So primarily, let's bring people to God and ourselves. Let's, let's uh, go to God. Um, yeah. And then, let's ask God to do uh, what He wants us to do. Uh, in this uh, daily bread, at uh, the, the opening, it, it asks like this, Which would you choose? A skiing holiday in Switzerland or rescuing children from danger in Prague? Nicholas Winton, just an ordinary man, chose the, la the latter. In 1938, war between Czechoslovakia and Germany seemed on the horizon. After Nicholas visited refugee camps in Prague, where many Jewish citizens lived in horrible conditions, he felt compelled to come up with a plan to help. He raised money to transport hundreds of children safe, safely out of Prague to Great Britain to be cared for by the British families before the onset of the World War II. So here's an example of one who opted for the needy, for the weak. And this is uh, what God wants us as people who know Him or people who, who, who are in authority, in positions. Now, here's a story of, uh, I, 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 I read, let me read. One day, a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking up and gently throwing things into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, Young man, what are you doing? The boy replied, Throwing starfish back into the ocean. The surf is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them back, they will die. The man laughed to himself and said, Do you realize there are miles of miles of beach and hundreds of starfish. You can't make any difference. After listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish and threw it into the surf. Then smiling at the man, he said, I made a difference to that one. We may not make a difference to all the needy, in the world, the poor and weak in the world. But if we help, even just one, we make a difference to that person. Let us pray. Hallelujah. May your name be glorified in our midst again. Thank you for reminding us of your heart for the weak, for the needy, and for the poor. Please help us. Pour your heart upon our hearts that we may follow you. We may obey you. We may help the weak. We may do just, just and righteous before your Father. And so we commit to you, everyone who are in positions, who are listening, that you will use us mightily for your glory to make a difference to many. We also pray for our country, for those in position, our rulers, those who in, in uh, authorities, Lord. Please help them to know you, that they may do what is right, not what is wrong, and they may rescue the weak, help the needy, the poor, rather than defending wickedness and injustice. Thank you, Lord. To the glory of your name. Hallelujah. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.